Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to another video on this past week's movement on the S&P 500. Now, for all those of you who are probably living under a rock, boy, did we have a huge week. And, uh, well, since we're going to look at this today at the heat map, I brought back one of my friends. Uh, he's been on the channel before. He is the, well, he's significantly better at technical analysis than me, only by a hair, only by a hair. Introduce yourself. So I'm Michael. I basically I'm the flip side of my buddy here. He does all the quantitative. I do all the technical stuff. You mean so the you mean the voodoo? You mean the you mean the magic voodoo stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the magic yeah. voodoo stuff. So you have yet to see the S and P 500 heat map, right? Yes, I've been living under a rock. Okay, so you're it. the one living. Well, but you know how much it has fallen though. But you just haven't seen the individual companies. Yeah. Okay. Well, are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. So with that said. Let's get started with this video. Right. And right here we have the S&P 500 heat map on the one week performance. What do you think, boy? What do you think? Jesus Christ. By the way, by the way, I'm pretty sure you haven't noticed yet, but I will point it out when we get there. So starting, of course, with the technology sector. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord I, I i can't get my eyes off career of energy sector it's just that 15 and 14 yeah and yeah there. no and, and just we'll get there when we get there but just yeah it's it's pretty bad but starting off with the tech sector we got pretty much everything a sea of red except for a couple companies right here oracle actually doing 0.86 percent which is actually kind of interesting i was not expecting oracle of all of them to go up but overall, man, especially the semiconductors really went down. I mean, look at this. Look at my baby, AVGO. You know I love AVGO. You never stopped talking about I it. I never stopped talking about it, right? I mean, dude, it was at a high of $667, and now it's under $500. Yeah. That's, that's insane. It's absolutely yeah. insane. And at the bottom of the pandemic, it was like around like $167 or something like that. That was crazy. So, yeah, like this thing has fallen 7.87%. Nvidia. Oh, Intel's thirty six dollars. Uh, like. Yeah, look at this man, almost thirty seven. Intel down five point six four percent. That's insane. And look at this, your your favorite two AMD, fourteen percent, fourteen percent on the on the well, week. It's it's kind of like we've been talking about, like how Oracle and everything. It's it's a derivatives market where everything's so tied to so many of these derivatives that no matter you could have the best company in the world like me and you i'll talk about intel all the time their fundamentals are, and from a technical standpoint it's like this company should be three times its price of what it's at and yeah. i know everyone everyone has like you're gonna get the amd fanboys and intel fanboys it's like amd is doing a lot to disrupt the market but or, or at, at the least end of the day intel's market share or at least Intel's yeah. market share yeah but the problem that it, people don't realize is at the end of the day, when you go look to buy a company, you have to ask yourself one very profound question. What covers the money I'm putting into it from an asset standpoint? Right. And Intel has more assets than it's dang like if it went to bankruptcy court today, you'd be fine. Like there'd be more stuff to sell than you're worried about. And on top Whereas of that, a and on top of that, uh, Intel is actually building a new uh, chip maker, uh, not, not, not chip maker, a chip plant in Ohio. And it's the, I think it's the only chip maker that doesn't rely on um, Taiwan semiconductors. I think. Yeah. I think AMD does rely on Taiwan semiconductors. So that's a, that's yeah. a big, you know, insulation just from you know, fears of like China or anything like that, right? Yep. And not even that, like any global disruption, the ports in California getting bogged down. Like yeah. if you if you can like a lot of companies like and you're going to see this now, even it's going to get exaggerated. Um, any company that has Asian exposure, that's not land border supply chain, like a lot of companies that like in consumer discretionaries, they went to um, a lot of them moved from China to Mexico. Right. And they're reaping the reward now because, yeah, they have supply chain issues, but they don't compare to the issue of when the deaf flu shortage hits in California and you're only going to have trucks that have this like super expensive to maintain exhaust system 
uh, being able to go into California where, let's say, a more scrupulous um, truck down to Mexico and uh, not have to worry about the death, not have to worry about these things, to get the goods to the company. Yeah. Not saying not saying we encourage that, but... It's better than... Ca- it, it's, better, it's better than California that the second you cross the border, every truck gets pulled over just to see if they have def, a death system. Right. So and, overall, dude, when it comes to the technology sector, everything has just been complete. Even Apple. Apple falling 4.06%. The, the, the golden boy of the S&P 500 is one, at 131. So that is, you know, it might be good. I think I did my analysis at around 125. So people might be willing to buy it, assuming that, you know, their assumptions is selling see. them that is around here. So. 125 you're probably looking at a 110 a 105 bottom for apple that you're going to start seeing once nasdaq crosses because it will probably go down 50 percent from all-time highs i mean um, i mean that's what you were saying last time and I, I remember that video a lot of people that video actually got a lot of dislikes uh i wonder if uh those dislikes would probably turn to likes now i highly doubt it but you know it's, we're, we're starting to turn right. So, okay, coming over now to the communications uh, sector. We got Google, look at this, down 3.2 and Facebook, which is, they changed their name to Meta, uh, 6.74. Facebook to 163 and Google to 2,157. And there isn't even a single lick of red here, dude, uh, red. There isn't a single lick of green here either, dude, look at this. Oh my lord, Disney 5.1, Comcast 7. I don't even know what this is. Charter Communications 6.8. Everything was just essentially down overall and, in and the it, communications. It, it's kind of funny where people are like, you have the Fed saying that we're not going to have a recession. I'm like, pure data is companies that are performing negative uh, forward uh, guidance yep. is because people are punching their wallets. They're right. looking at it. They're, they're cutting out the Netflix. They're cutting out the internet bill. Um, Netflix lost a bunch of subscribers. Yeah. yeah, and it's and you see with communication, it's like they're gonna change from one plan that be, you know every two years or every year you got to change your phone company uh, because your contract expires and then they start raising prices on you. You're gonna see them all migrate, and when they're migrating, they're gonna migrate to like they're not gonna have this unlimited plan with this many lines. They're they're gonna trim it down. They're gonna right. say, well, you we're we're not gonna have this. We're not gonna have that. We're not gonna. Uh, they're going go to become more efficient about it because they, yeah. they won't be able to afford as much as they could yeah. before. Prime, prime example, who's going to Disney right now? <laughs> I know from like, the hundreds, hundreds of people are going to Disneyland and stuff. The average Joe is not planning a cruise to Alaska or the Bahamas. Hey, they're man. looking at how they can uh, get food in their bellies for next week. Hey, man, and looking at just Disney alone at the current price of $94, I think in the pandemic, the bottom, it was like around like 85. So we're we're getting close to that pandemic low. But pretty much overall here, there really is no green at all. Okay, coming down to the consumer cyclicals. Do you see uh, the funny part yet or no? Jesus do you Christ. see? Do you see it or no? Yeah, I see it. I well, see the housing market going to the crap itself in the heartbeat. No, 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 no. Here in this in this se- sector, do you see the funny number yet? No, I don't. Tesla down six six six. Oh my god! I, I just saw it like when they when they popped it up, and I'm just like, you haven't seen it yet, but I'm gonna point it out. Tesla is down 6.66 percent, six hundred and fifty dollars. Let me pull up the tesla chart real quick because it i think it had a high of like yeah twelve hundred dollars look at this thing twelve hundred dollars on the 52 week high and it went as low as six hundred and eight dollars and it's currently at we just saw right here 650 so you know you know my opinion about tesla yeah, it's, but, uh, but, but you know, Tesla's the future. Uh, oh, no, I, I'm not disagreeing uh, the pre- with that. The, pre- the, pre- the president's telling you to go buy electric cars. Why are you going to worry about gas? Anymore? Well, I'm not disagreeing with that. The The main thing is, is just that you can 100% overpay for, for growth, right? People were yeah. buying into Tesla because of the fact that it is the future. And I'm not saying that it's not. The thing is, is that, you know, what's it worth, right? When, when you buy a company, you don't want to buy just because, oh, future projections, right? You want to, you know, that cash flow that a company has in the future is worth something because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So this is just what we get to all those people who are like, 
at twelve hundred dollars of Tesla, it will come down. It will come down by half. Well, not, it, it has actually. It, it kind of has. Yeah, and we got to go back to this point about half. Um, I'll, we'll circle back around to it once we're done, but I want to make a point about that. Sure, no problem. Uh, Amazon down uh, 3.13%, $106. So I don't know if you know, but Amazon did have a stock split, a 20 yeah, to 1 stock split. It. So you might want to multiply that 106 uh, you know, by 20 to get the one that we're used to in the in the several two, uh, several thousands. Uh, yeah. Home Depot down 6.4. Home Depot reaching a 52-week low this week, as well as, I believe, Lowe's. Man, Home Depot and Lowe's is one of those companies that I absolutely love. You know why? Why? Dividends? No. Well, yes, but no. <laughs> Amazon proof. They are Amazon proof, right? Home home development stores. Amazon will not be able to okay. get rid of uh, okay, home I development see where you stores. Get. You're not going to... They, they're... They're a not. I wouldn't say niche market because niche is a horrible term for this. They're insulated. Yeah, they're, in, they're like I said. They're they're insulated from competitors coming in, basically um, disrupting their market share, like Amazon did to the box stores or and eBay all or this. even eBay or even eBay. Yeah, like like where the way, else? Yeah, you like get home improvement stuff. It's well, like it, most not even of that. It, not even that. It's it's more of if it's more of just like when you go, like for example, if you're gonna go paint your house, you're gonna go to the store and see the the paint, right? Yeah. You're not gonna buy it online. That's not the way that that works. You want to be able to see the actual product and you know do all the stuff. So that's why I love Home Depot and Lowe's. Nike falling six point four four percent. Booking holding nine point four one. Everything is just in the red, right? I don't even think there's a single green in the consumer cyclicals. McDonald's one point six. Starbucks. We you know I know you you love Starbucks. I know that's Sar sarcasm right there but you know starbucks down 5.02 percent so everything in the consumer cyclical is it's down a lot coming down to the consumer defensive we see a little bit of green here when it comes to monster beverage corporation uh not not surprised that uh you know beverages yeah, are that's uh, when 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 everyone when everyone's working three jobs they gotta drink energy drinks to keep I, up so. i guess you're right but overall look at this procter and gamble down 6.76 percent 132 dollars walmart 2.8 at under 120 that's insane costco dude costco is one of those companies i know you love costco uh costco is one of those companies that i don't even think i don't even remember what the high was on costco let's actually see that real quick costco was at 612 and it was a low at 300 yeah look at this look at this it was a low of 380 a high of 612 so costco is one of those companies that People, it's like Visa and MasterCard. People wanted to drop because it is such a rare chance to buy them cheap. It's, uh, like, it, it's like an app. It's the Apple of, um, uh, of discount stores. I would consider it. Well, I wouldn't say discount stores. I would say I, I would consider it the, the Apple of the consumer defensives. Yeah. Target down 6.93. Altria Group 6.42. And pretty much everything overall in the consumer defensive has been red. Pretty much in the red except for ironically enough monster uh, beverage which is kind of funny anyways moving now to the financial sector here is your favorite company bank of america bust down my back <laughs> bank of america down 3.77 percent to 32 dollars that's insane banks overall dude banks overall have just been crushed even even credit card services visa mastercard mastercard 7.2 visa 4.75 American Express 6.63, PayPal 8, what is this? Capital One's 4.73, everything is just in the red here, dude. Thoughts on this? Well, financials are going to be directly hit by rising interest rates. So I, I, I don't think so. To, I don't think so. Well, I, I think you got the opposite on that. Think about well, it. Well, because you're going to you're going to have people, well, rising interest rates cause debt to be more expensive. So people are not going to be a spendy like going back to how in consumer discretionaries they're looking at their wallets and basically only buying the stuff they need. True. Banks are going to make more money per transaction through rate hikes on debt on people's credit cards. Mm -hmm. But because you're not going to have the same volume of transactions. That's a good point. It, well, it offsets the it offsets, total it offsets or, the interest rate hike. Yeah. And, uh, because you don't like banks are making what was banks' biggest um, two quarters ago? What was banks' biggest money maker? 
I Reeboks. mean, oh, that that's easy. It, 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 the biggest money maker was all these tech companies, like starter tech companies, uh, taking on debt. Yeah, like and then the you have well, I mean, like people, you know, that kind of like stuff. even Robin people, like you, you have, well, yeah. um, you, you know, refis going through the roof. You right. had mortgage sales. Mortgage. They were right. They were writing loans left and right. Right. And now, if you talk to any mortgage broker or anyone. It's like if they write two mortgages a month, it'd be a miracle. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know exactly on that, but but I don't know about the exact two. But uh, yeah, no, you're 100 percent correct. I mean, I just made a video that the the 30 year fixed is at 5.74, 5.74. So it's it's getting bad. So yeah, this does make sense. And the tech sector and the finance sector is actually. Well, at least the banks uh, are pretty much tied together because, especially startup companies, I think that you're going to see a lot less IPOs and a lot and a lot less startups overall because of the fact that interest rates are that high and that um, debt is significantly harder to come across. Right? It's more expensive. Oh, yeah. But coming over here further into the financial sector, we see a little bit more green here when it comes to like Truist Financial Corporation. But overall, this is still pretty bad. CME was barely up. I think it was, this was the only one that's a little bit up at 0.32. And over here, as we just said, Truist Financial Corporation a little bit up as well. But Berkshire Hathaway, look at this. Berkshire Hathaway down 8.1%. Warren Buffett's company right here, 8.1% well, down. You know, you know his famous phrase, if there's blood in the street, that's when you buy. even if it's your own, yeah. buy. Yeah. And to be fair, though, Berkshire Hathaway, but they mainly, well, I don't know if they mainly do, but I think they do insurances and, I th and, also, and they also do real estate. So, yeah. you know, people, less people doing mortgages, right? Less people taking on uh, loans. Most people selling. Most people, well, well, I guess you're right. Yeah, but when people, I, I, I think it mainly has to do with the fact that more people are taking out less debt on houses. So that's, I think, why yeah. their stock went down. Coming over here to the healthcare sector, pretty much everything is in the red, except for a couple companies. We got Biogen, the green, 2.15%. What is this? Vertex Pharmaceuticals, 3.22. Regeneron, 1.6. Moderna, 0.72. But overall, this is essentially in the red. Well, the one I'm really hoping that falls even more, dude, is Abvi. That's your baby. Uh, or one, one, of, one of your children. One of my I'll children. One of my children. Okay, my baby is AVG. Okay, let's just, let's just, but yeah, Abvi, dude. I, I, remember, I remember seeing Abvi at the bottom of the pandemic at $80. It's 138 And it was as high as I think of like 150 or something. Yeah, there's actually somebody I watch. You know how many dividends from Abvi he gets a quarter? How much? One thousand one hundred. Jeez. Just on Abvi alone, and I'm just like, what? So, yeah, that's the dream, man. That's the dream. We got United Health Group, four hundred and fifty-two dollars down, six point seven two. CVS down almost five percent. Pretty much everything here is in the red, dude. We have a couple stragglers in like the biotech in the green, but aside from that, everything is in the red. Coming now to the industrials. Well, uh, the only green one. You want to read it? <laughs> yeah. Boeing. <laughs> Boeing. That's funny. Dude, Boeing I was is looking, such a I'm meme. Like... Boeing is such a meme. It is. I, I almost bought into Boeing. Thank God I didn't. This was back in like 2020 or like 2019. Oh my God. This is when they were having their issues with like the 737 Max or whatever. Oh my God, dude. This is just a, a mess. Like Boeing is such a meme. But overall, aside from Boeing and aside also from FedEx, FedEx is actually up. Look at that. Whoa. Look at this, dude. FedEx is up 11.19%. It's not that surprising considering shipping. But, you, but look at UPS though. Look at UPS. It's down 1.14. Why is FedEx up? Did they have, um, maybe they had Probably earnings. Earnings. Probably earnings. Probably earnings, yeah. And they, what what it was is FedEx probably had earnings and then they did something unique and they didn't issue negative forward guidance or they maybe have wordsmith of their uh, guidance in a way that didn't result in people taking it as negative. So when you're basically bludgeoned to, uh, with all these negative earning uh, forward guidances, you just believe it wholeheartedly. Also, dude, look at this. FedEx even raised their dividends recently, 53%. Damn, that's that's huge. That's massive. Um, I'm not really seeing as to why they rallied, probably in like one of these articles, but regardless, FedEx doing the best at almost 11.2% and Boeing, ironically enough, Boeing. But everything else, it is essentially in the red. Even 3M, right? 3M is down to 129? I didn't even notice that. I didn't even notice that. Oh my lord. What was your price target for that? Uh, one. I forgot. 
but I think it was like a one... I think it was like a 160, I think. I'm not fully sure. I don't remember. But yeah, 130. Oh my god, that is insane. GE, well, I don't like General Electric. General Electric, you know something interesting about GE? They did, I've never seen this, but they did, well, I didn't, I didn't, I've never seen this until they did it. They did the first reverse stock split. That's rare. Meaning instead of cutting it, they, they increased it. <laughs> so I was just like, what? That's that's kind of dumb. All right. Anyways. Yeah, well, it's it, it's not really dumb. It's when you're it. Well, what was GE's price before it? Oh, like because a dollar. I remember, it was like a dollar. Yeah, that's why that's why they did it. They do it so that they don't become a penny stock. Right. Or there's like when Amazon's splitting, they're basically gambling where they're making their stock easier to manipulate. All right. Coming now to the real estate market. American Tower down six percent. You, I know you, you don't really delve much into, into REITs, though, right? No. Yeah. Uh, American Tower, CCI, these two are, like, one of my favorites. Uh, they do... Well, they, they control uh, the tower, like, the cell phone towers that okay. provide, like, the 5G and all that stuff. Like, the Verizon, uh, AT&T, they provide the software, but the physical tower, these guys own. The infrastructure. Yeah, the infrastructure is what they own. We got pretty much everything in the red here, except for... Duke Realty Corporation, I've never heard of this one, up 3.33%, but everything else is in the red. Even my other baby, Realty Income Corporation, down to $64 at 1.65%. Oh my god, I really want this one to fall because this one pays monthly dividends, dude. It's not, it's, it's insane. Absolutely insane. That's, that's a good one. Oh, it's it's, oof, it's it's a staple for all di dividend investors. I'm not even joking. Next, we got the utilities. This is a foreshadowing of the energy of the energy sector because, well, everything is down here. We got Next Era Energy 6.72% down. Duke Energy Corporation 9.23. You also don't know a lot about utilities, right? No, I just know Duke's my electric company. So okay, well, <laughs> well now, you all, know, uh... now you know who to invest. In. <laughs> Like, mine, my, mine is a PPL. Mine's a PPL. It used to be FE, but I don't even think they're here. At least I don't, I don't think they're here. Yeah, yeah, they're not in the S&P 500. But yeah, Next Era Energy down 6.72. Duke down 9.23. So I absolutely love Southern Corporation 9.36. Zell down 10 exactly. Look at that. Wow, that's absolutely insane. Uh, but yeah, overall the, the utilities is everything is in the red here. Even even like the water companies, we got AWK down 11.08 percent everything is down here and next we got the energy sector the best performing sector to date at least on the year man that's a lot of red you know energy was the best performing sector and it still is i i, I think it still is but overall in the energy sector everything is just deep in the red we got conical phillips 20 percent down exxon mobile 14.27 chevron 15.4 everything is in the red the basic materials which is everything is also very much in the red. there isn't a single green here at all so everything is in the red as well lynn is down 6.5 what is this sherwin williams down almost 10 and everything else is in the red so overall this past week has been a bloodbath but that but that red actually makes sense crew just had a massive pullback it hit the 120 uh, dollar resistance on crude. It, literally, you still you see crude hit 120 back in 126, mid February. Buddy. 126 at the at the yeah. peak. Well, in February it hit 120, and then or you see the first peak after February between April. Right, so yeah, right yep, there, yeah, 120, yeah. and basically it's a 120 is a very big marker in crude, and it, this is the second time it went to. It passed 120 it, again. Yeah, so what what you're seeing is it touched 120, sold off. Then it touched it again, but it, it kind of pushed through the zone a little bit, but then got rejected. Right. This is a sign of a long-term resistance of being tested, and that long-term resistance is going to break the next time it touches it. What resistance but point? 120. Oh, God, well, that's 120 not to 125. <laughs> oh, dear you Lord. Will, 120 to 125 is the last breaking zone before $147 recruit again dear god and yeah so crude has to if it is not a just a volume spike of pure just you know acceleration and not based on fundamental moves will 
settle down. Crude will stay around the hundred, hundred and ten dollar range for a little bit. When mm -hmm. I say a little bit, I mean three weeks. Okay. Don't keep your hopes up for much longer, cheaper gas prices for a little bit. What do you mean cheaper? It hasn't gone down. At You'll, least in well, Pennsylvania, okay. dude, in Pennsylvania, it went from four hundred five to three ninety nine. It's you know, you, it's, no, no, sorry, sorry. What am I saying? What am I saying? Five hundred five to four ninety nine. Let's. You know. Yeah, that's your. That, that's why I meant by cheaper. It that's went the down. Deep, that's the the dip right there. Yeah, but that's you're it. gonna see crude have to create a consolidation like it did before, and then slowly run back up to that point. So see, it went from the one twenties to one ten. 110 yep. floor so uh, round, i'm expecting yeah. a, a three to four week of consult a week of consolidation where it kind of goes sideways for a little bit probably three days four days and then it slowly will trend back up to tackle 120 again oh my god what i think it will do is it'll consolidate jump up a little bit consolidate again to create a base right around 115 118 the moment you have a bullish event for crude it will use that momentum to break through 120 125 and you'll see 130 you'll see 130 dollar crude again so what you're basically saying is this thing might actually go to like 200 bucks a share yeah you, you, crude, God's sakes. crude is not going to go down people can keep believing that crude is going to go down there's nothing fundamentally driving crude well from a technical basis or a finance or a pure financial basis you have there a huge demand with very little, little to supply. no supply you're right and the people that are supplying the crude what incentive do they have whatsoever to lower the price saudi arabia russia venezuela iran make more money off of you that's true that's true i do think that oil can come down but as you said there is no reason for it to come down because there's no there's no incentive to it the only way that oil can come down is if we have a surplus of supply yeah that's it but there is no surplus right now and there's and there's no player that's going to allow that to happen right. that's currently pumping right the there only is, country right. in the world that can create that surplus is the united states right we have more oil than we know what to do with but we refuse to dig it out of the ground right so, so that's congratulations right we're gonna have 150 200 you will see by next year you're gonna probably see 200 barrel crude again not financial you'll advice. see yeah <laughs> You're, you're going to see 100, 150, um, that's just my opinion about it, you're going to see 150 um, by August. I think you'll see August, September, you'll see 150 barrel crude. Because of that, it's a safe haven. It's a safe haven asset for investors. And go, this is where I wanted to go back to the whole 50% decline from all-time highs. NASDAQ, S&P, and Dow Jones, like we said before, are like... People thought, oh, S&P can't fall more than 20% or 30%. If we have a mild correction, we'll go back up. It's like, you're going to have, you, you you didn't think 20 or 30% was real. And not, then, only, not only that, dude, look at this. Dow, the Dow is down under 30,000. Yeah. The Dow is down under 30,000 right now. If you look at it, it, what, it's a classic bull, uh, bear flag. Look at this. It's a th Just in January. In January of this year, January 2nd, 36,800. 36, it is now almost down. You know, it's 3,000 points away from a 10,000 point drop. Dow Jones is going to go to 25, uh, 25K. Jesus Christ. You're, 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 that's, if you, the bleeding stops there, you're going to be lucky. That's, yeah, that's the 50% marker on the COVID run, as I call it. So if they, if Fibonacci or Tracement, basically any run, that you can retrace, you retrace 60% of any parabolic run, which is COVID. COVID's a parabolic run. Mm -hmm. You haven't, you haven't created areas where you consolidate and flush out the bad, the rot in the system. You just kept coming on and building onto the rot. So when the time to pay the piper comes, it's, you know, everyone said 30% down is not possible. Well, congratulations, we're in a bear market. In my personal opinion, we are starting to get to the point where some companies are beginning to fall, at least from a fundamental standpoint. So all in all, when it comes to this past week, everything has just been in the red and we're going to see a lot more companies falling into a buy-in territory. So, you know, be on the lookout for videos on that because, yeah, the more earnings we get, the more these things falls, the more of an opportunity you guys are going to get. That pretty much does it for this video. Like, if you like, comment, subscribe. Boy, would you like to say any last words? No, just never think that something can't happen. Because it will. Prove it can't happen. 
and then maybe you'll be thankful for that. And at the end of the day, every investment is a present value of all future cash flow. That pretty much does it. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites. Link in the description below as well as the Let's Play channel. The link is also in the description. So with that said, peace out and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.